Hello everyone and welcome back to my series of tutorials in C++. And today's topic, I'm going to cover recursion. Recursion is a very powerful programming concept that can make your code more efficient and elegant. Let's start by defining what is recursion. So recursion is a programming technique where a function calls itself in order to accomplish a task. It is a way of solving a problem by breaking it down into smaller, simpler problems. One of the the most common example of a recursion is a factorial function. The factorial of a number is the product of all the numbers from one up to that number or the specific number that the user input. For example, the factorial of five is five times four times three times two times one, which equals to 120. For this tutorial, I'm going to write two functions that demonstrates how recursion works in computer programming. The first function I'm going to write is the factorial function. So the function is going to return an integer and the name of my function is going to be factorial. And inside of the function parameter, I'm expecting an integer to pass through. So that variable, I would call it a number. So inside of the function, we want to check for two things. We want to check if the number that is passed through the parameters is equals to zero or if the number, so let's enclose everything inside of the brackets. And if the number is equal to zero or if the number is equals to one, then we want to return one because you cannot multiply one to the number in front of it. So one multiplied by zero will always give zero. You, there's nothing else you can multiply before the zero. Anything before the zero will be a negative number. So if the number that is passed to the factorial parameter is one or zero, then we just want to end the program and return one. Else, if it's not one, then we want to return the number times, and here is where recursion happened. So we're going to use the name of the function, which is factorial, and inside of the parameter, we want number minus one. We want the number that is passed through to be multiplied by the number in front of it. So that's why we have number minus one. And that's all you have to write for a factorial function. Now let's create our main. So let's declare an integer number and we're going to initialize the number variable to 10. And let's make a C out statement. And inside of the C out statement, we're going to put a note saying the factorial of, and we want to call the function inside of the C out statement. And inside of the function parameter, we're going to pass through the number we declared at line number 17. So now let us build the project, start without debugging. And here you can see the factorial of 10. So let us change it to a smaller number like five and let us build and run again. And here you can see the factorial of five. So another example of recursion is the Fibonacci sequence. And the Fibonacci sequence is a series of number where each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. So the Fibonacci sequence goes 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. So if we add 0 and 1, we're going to get 1. If we add 1 plus 1, we're going to get 2. We add 2 plus 1, we're going to get 3. 3 plus 2, we're going to get 5. 5 plus 3, we're going to get 8. 8 plus 5, we're going to get 13. 13 plus 8, we're going to get 21, and so on. So let's write a function 
to demonstrate how the Fibonacci sequence work. So our function is going to return an integer and we're going to call this function Fibonacci. And instead of the function parameter, we're going to take an integer called number. The first thing we want to check is if the number is less than or equals to one, then we want to return the number. So the function first checks if the argument is less than or equal to one. If it is, then the function would return the argument. If the argument is greater than one, then the function would return the Fibonacci of the argument minus one. Else, we want to return. So we're going to call the function in the return statement and we want the number minus one plus we're going to call the function again and we want the number minus two. And let's do a simple C out statement. And in the statement, we're just going to leave a simple note saying the Fibonacci sequence four, and we're going to use the number variable we declared at line 35 is and let us just end this line of code. And now we're going to call the function. And in order for the function to work properly, we're going to use a loop. So you can use a while loop or you can also use a for loop. So for this example, I'm going to use a for loop. And I want to declare an integer i, which is going to be my counter. And I'm going to initialize my counter to zero. So, and I want as long as i is less than the number, I want you to keep printing the number. And I'm also going to increment the counter or the variable i as long as there is numbers to be printed to the screen. So instead of the for loop, I'm going to create a cout statement and I'm going to call the Fibonacci function. And instead of the function parameter, I'm going to use the counter or the I variable I've created inside of the for loop. Some people may tend or some people may want to put the number inside of the function parameter to get the variable printed as we did for the factorial. So when we call the factorial function inside of the function parameter, we use the variable itself. But in, for the Fibonacci sequence, we are using a for loop or a loop. And inside of the Fibonacci function, we want to use the counter to print the numbers. So let us build and run the program. Here is the result for the Fibonacci function when we have inputted the number five. So just remember, recursion is a very powerful programming concept that will make your code more efficient and elegant. Just keep in mind that recursion can also lead to a stack overflow if not implemented carefully. And also remember that recursion has a time complexity of 0.2n squared, which is not very efficient for big inputs. If you understand the concept of recursion, you can solve complex problems. So that's all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.